how can people who are at the start point of game development get a job in a game studio, especially in a big one, when all the job requirements are like, you need to have 20 years of experience, you need to have worked in 40 game development companies for 50 years at least, you need to have 30 games that are highly successful in order for you to you know, work as a junior developer. And when most game developers see that, they think I cannot, you know, I don't have these requirements, so I'm not even going to apply for the job. Now that's the first mistake because all of these quote unquote requirements are just wish lists from HR people who want to, you know, suck up to the higher ups so that they can get, you know, some rewards or whatever. So what you see in the requirements is just a wish list or the ideal candidate that the company would love to have, which in most cases never happens because all of the requirements they put out, it's impossible for somebody to have. But what can you do to stand out and get a job, even if they are looking for an experienced, quote unquote, person who has a year of experience, two years, three years, how can you get a job as somebody who is just starting out? Well, there are multiple things that you can do. First things first, because you did not work in any game studio, you need experience. In order to get experience, you need to work. So instead of working in a game studio, you can work on your own game projects. And this is where a lot of game developers mess up because they try to work or they basically try to create some, you know, game that's complex, too complex, you know, from start to finish with the main menu, with the levels, with the enemies, with the bosses, with the progress, with all of these things. And that's okay if you can do that, but it will take you a lot of time to create something that's good something that looks nice, feels nice, and will impress the employer employer over there at the game studio. That's one option. You can definitely do that, but it will take you a lot of time. And during that time, a lot of people will snatch that job while you are creating your game to apply for that, you know, job. Another thing, and this is what I see very few people do. In fact, I did not see anyone do except the people I gave advice to do, because this is something that I've been experimenting about for years and I've found it to be very, very successful. And that is instead of creating a full game, create parts of the game. So you can take some very cool part, let's say a grappling hook, let's say a teleport, let's say some special effect attack, let's say some cinematic where the boss comes out and he has, you know, special effects attacks and all of that stuff. So just create that small part instead of creating the full game. And you can have many of these parts and then maybe you can even put them together at the end and create something, you know, playable in 30 minutes that can be demonstrated, you know? So that's one thing that you can do to stand out and show that you have experience without actually working in a game studio. Another thing that you can do is, and this is also something that I advise, and a lot of my students who took me on this, they actually got results and got hired in game studios. And that is basically create some sort of a blog. You don't even have to have a website in terms of you buying your own hot hosting and servers and all of that stuff. You have Medium, you have similar platforms where you can write about your game development journey. But when you write, focus on either showcasing the gameplay of the game that you're creating and putting emphasize how you created that specific part. So how you created something in your game, especially if you implemented some, you know, logic that's not common, that's not like, you know, copy paste it from the internet and there you go. And especially if you use also algorithms and stuff like that. So make sure that you explain these things and make them visible on that page. And it costs you nothing, basically. I mean, in the start, in the first two, three weeks until you get used to writing, it will take you maybe, you know, an hour to write that article. When once you get a grip of it, how it works, it will probably take you five, 10, 15 minutes to write that. And you don't even have to write it every single day. One, two per week can do. And at the end of the day, it will give you long-term benefits, which means you getting hired in a game studio. And this is something most game developers don't do. As I said, in fact, I didn't see anyone do this when they apply for a job. There are some people who block, but these people don't apply for a job and they block for other reasons because they love it or you know they had products to sell and all of that stuff. But people who want to get hired, they don't do this. They think it's a waste of time, but this actually brings you result. Another thing that you need to do, and this is a must, is when you showcase all of these things, be that the first thing that I told you, like the project, the part of the project, or the blog, or whatever, 
showcase just a small part of it in a video. So don't expect when you apply for a job that the HR people or whoever is reviewing your portfolio and looking at your application, he's not going to download the project. He's not going to open it, especially as I said, if somebody who is not a developer is looking at your portfolio, he doesn't know what that even is. He cannot open the project because, you know, companies have different roles. So all, all, all in all, make sure that you put a small video. And this is what our student Mihail did when he created a few of Unreal Engine projects from the Game Dev Pro course. He put them on his portfolio and then he took, he used the video to showcase them. And when they see the video, Video can be up to one minute, but I recommend 30 seconds because you know that's not a lot of time that they can spend on because they have multiple applications as well. So they watched the 30 second video, liked what they saw, then they downloaded the project and yada, yada, yada. What most people do is they just put a few pictures and they expect that somebody will download their project, open it, look at the code. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. No company has that time because if they have 100 people applying for that position, imagine if they need to go through hundreds and hundreds of lines of code from every single person, you know, it will take them, you know, three years to, to, to hire somebody. So these are some of the things that I've noticed a lot of people make mistakes. The result is they wonder why they don't get, you know, they don't hear back from Game Studio. First of all, if they apply, because a lot of people get intimidated by the fact what they see on the requirements and they don't apply at all for whatever reason. Then they get intimidated by that, so they don't apply. After that, if they do apply, they took courage to apply. They either have some, you know, for a lack of a better word, shitty projects, which are just copy pasted from tutorials because, you know, a lot of, you know, if you just take the projects from the tutorials, thousands of other people who have access to YouTube or that tutorial can do the same thing. Don't copy paste the projects from free tutorials, especially don't, you know, don't do that because the code is usually bad. Coding practices are awful and all of that stuff. And, you know, that's basically it. These are small things that if you start doing them today can get you really, really good results in a month, two, three months from today no matter which level you are, or basically if you're just at the starting point, this is your first week, second week, third week, whatever, just start doing these things and you will see first how you will learn and then you will see how in the long term you will benefit from it and probably will get hired in the end if you are persistent.